Too Good to Be True, The Colossal Book of Urban Legends by Jan Harold Bromland. Chapter 11, Strange Things Happen, Story, yeah, Legend Number 1, The Vanishing Hitchhiker. Last night I visited on the telephone with a friend who is a retired school librarian. She had a story for me. The woman who lives next door to her has a friend who knows some people to whom this happened. There are a couple who have a business in CO Falls or Sio Falls, South Dakota, as well as Sio City, Iowa. The two towns are about 90 miles apart on Interstate 29. These people travel the route often and are very familiar with the highway. One day not long ago they were driving along I-29 towards Sio Falls when they happened to notice a hitchhiker. They do not normally pick up hitchhikers, but they did stop to pick up this one. They visited with him as they rode along, and then he suddenly announced, The world is going to end tomorrow. They looked round, but there was no one in the back seat. They thought he might have opened the door and jumped out, although they had been going 65 miles per hour, so they stopped and reported the incident to a highway patrolman. His comment was, you know, this is the sixth time that this has been reported to me this month. Another friend of mine who is a police woman in Sio, in, in Sio City, reports that she has heard the story nine or ten times from the same police community, her church group and others from the police community, her church group and others. The highway patrolman supposedly has heard it 15 or 16 times. Sometimes the message is, the Lord is coming for the second time and you should prepare yourself. Bizarre Tales of a Mysterious Hitchhiker Frackville, Pennsylvania. If someone walked up to you and told you a story about an experience they had, or about which they heard concerning a hitchhiker who foretold the end is near and disappeared from inside a vehicle, what would you think? Like most people, you would probably doubt the report or maybe turn the TV set to the popular Unsolved Mystery show and try to summon its host, Robert Stack, to unravel the bizarre event. Such a story was brought to the attention of the Evening Herald recently and the reactions of editorial department personnel were predictable. Yeah, right. Check with the state police, however, revealed troopers had received several calls relating to the hitchhiker incident. Sergeant Barry Reed, station commander at Frackville, confirmed receiving three or four calls about the mysterious vanishing hitchhiker from reliable and credible individuals who all shared the same experience. The hitchhiker was described as a tall, thin man with long dark hair and wearing a long dark coat. He was picked up on Route 61 near Frackville's southern end on Monday, January 31st, between 6 and 7 a.m. However, contrary to the unofficial report, state, state troopers said they received no reports of a, about a hitchhiker in conversation about the weather, the turbulence of society, or the angel Gabriel tooting his horn for the second time, However, troopers did say the reports made to them concerned the hitchhiker having said, 
I am here to tell you the end is near before vanishing into thin air. Some of the reports relate to the Evening Herald. Alleged, uh, alleged the mysterious hitchhiker warned, Jesus is coming, Jesus is coming, and then disappeared. Sergeant Reed recalled that while he was stationed in Lancaster County, County about ten years ago, a similar hitchhiker story was circulated. My neighbour who lives across the street from me told me that her boyfriend's boss's aunt was driving home down was driving down I ten, going east towards Baton Rouge about two months ago, when she spotted a young man with long hair hitchhiking right around the Bro Bridge area. Not one to pick up hitchhikers, she surprised herself by pulling over and offering the man a ride. He got into he got into the car. The man stayed quiet throughout the drive. Even when the woman questioned him about where he was from, his family, etc. Suddenly, the man looked at her and said, Gabriel will soon blow his horn. Then the man vanished into thin air. The woman became hysterical, driving faster and faster, until a Louisiana state trooper pulled her over. After telling the state trooper what happened, he told her that hers was the seventh report of the same vanishing hitchhiker that day. The Iowa story is from Thelma Johnson of Sio City. In a letter sent in September 1990, the Pennsylvania story is from the Shenandoah Evening Herald for February 4th, 1994. And the Louisiana story is from Kay Granger of Scott, Louisiana, in a letter sent in March 1994. These examples typify the most common recent form of the legend, with the friend of a friend attribution. The precise highway details, the mysterious statement and vanishing of the hitchhiker, and the police affirming that several such reports were received. The Vanishing Hitchhiker has international distribution as one of the oldest and most widely told of all urban legends. As such, it has long attracted the attention of folklore scholars. In the earliest book that I know of devoted, of devoted entirely to urban rumours and legends, Maria Bonaparte's 1947 Myths of War is a study of the corpse in the car variation of the vanishing hitchhiker legend. Proof of the hitchhiker's prophecy is the truth of a second prediction that the driver will have a corpse in his car by the end of the day. My 1981 book bearing the same title as the legend contained 20 pages of discussion and notes on the legend, and merely scratch the surface. A published bibliography of contemporary legend studies listed 133 publications concerning The Vanishing Hitchhiker up to 1991. Many American versions describe a teenage girl in a light party dress who hitches a ride home she vanishes and is identified, often from a portrait, as the ghost of a girl who died on the same day many years earlier. A sweater she borrowed from the driver is found draped over her tombstone. This is the version that Dick Lee, Lee turned into a song, as did various other pop singers and groups in their own times and styles. The legend has also inspired films, 
radio and tele- television dramatizations, short stories, and an, un- an unending series of tabloid reports. In 1987, after recording a discussion of this, and other urban legends for a Salt Lake City radio station, I turned in to hear the bro- tuned. I tuned in to hear the broadcast of my interview a few days later. I was amused that the song aired immediately after it was Dick Lee Lee's nineteen sixty five Laurie, so I sent a note to the interviewer complimenting him on digging out this appropriate golden oldie. But it turned out that the selection was not intended. The announcer on duty had just picked this song as the next one up in the regular rotation of new and old favourites without knowing what had preceded it in the record in the recorded interview. As I said, strange things do happen in this world. Yes, they do. And none stranger than the story we've just heard, but it's about to get stranger. As we uh, next time investigate the lost wreck. Until then, I hope you weren't too scared. <laughs>